U.S. Senate and House committees have agreed to include a bill sanctioning Russia's new natural gas pipeline to Europe into the National Defense Authorization Act NDAA, putting up a potential roadblock to the project's completion. The House and Senate are expected to vote later this month on the NDAA, which often becomes a vehicle for a range of policy initiatives, as it's one of only a few pieces of major legislation that Congress approves each year. The proposal attached to the bill that addresses Nord Stream 2 would impose U.S. sanctions on any companies helping Russia lay the $11 billion pipeline. Nord Stream 2 is a new export gas pipeline running from Russia to Europe across the Baltic Sea. The route covers over 1,200 kilometers. The total capacity of two strings of Nord Stream 2 is 55 billion cubic meters of gas per year. The aggregated design capacity of Nord Stream and Nord Stream 2 is, therefore, 110 billion cubic meters of gas per year. This $10.5 billion project, which runs parallel to the existing Nord Stream pipeline, has been spearheaded by Gazprom and five European energy companies and is reportedly nearing completion. It's expected to double Russian gas shipments to the EU's biggest economy Germany. Germany is the biggest foreign buyer of Russian gas. In 2018, Germany set a new record for Russian gas purchases at 58.5 billion cubic meters. At present, Germany is Gazprom's largest export market. Gazprom cooperates with German companies along the entire value chain, from gas production in Russia to gas deliveries to end consumers in Germany. The cooperation also covers sports, social, and cultural projects. Russia and Germany are connected by extensive gas transmission routes, Yamal, Europe and Nord Stream. The transnational Yamal, Europe gas pipeline traverses four countries, namely Russia, Belarus, Poland, and Germany. Its annual capacity is 32.9 billion cubic meters of gas. The Nord Stream gas pipeline is built across the Baltic Sea. The pipeline delivers Russian gas directly to Europe, bypassing transit countries. Its annual capacity is 55 billion cubic meters of gas. The Nord Stream 2 pipeline will ensure safe and stable supplies of gas to Europe. Washington fears this will give Moscow significant geopolitical leverage over Europe while also punishing Ukraine. Nord Stream 2 would begin operation in mid-2020. Even with the effective 90-day grace period allowed by the U.S. sanctions, the last 168 kilometers of each of the two strings of the pipe may not be laid by the time the punitive measures kick in. It's unlikely that the Swiss-based contractor now working on Nord Stream 2 will defy the U.S. restrictions if it's not done in time. Then, Gazprom will need to use the only pipe-laying vessel it owns, the Akademischen Chersky, to finish the job, a slow and iffy scenario, even if Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Nord Stream 2 won't be halted. A straight path from Russia to the EU without going through Ukraine or the Baltic republics is a thorn in the eye for the USA and NATO. Any gas flowing through there could be switched off by Brennan, Clapper, or some other neocons, to hold half of Europe hostage. How dare Europe to control their own fate? How dare they? The sanctions on Russia have been a total failure from the start. Trump is a complete idiot to think that was ever a good idea. Western globalist financiers oppose Nord Stream. Trump is a minor actor with a bit role in this affair. Trump does not command bipartisan support in Congress. Another entity has already purchased that. Russian President Vladimir Putin's grand plan of supplying gas both to Europe bypassing Ukraine and to China through the just-opened Power of Siberia pipeline can no longer be scuppered. This is the energy needed by the German economy. As the German economy goes up, it needs a lot of energy. Nuclear and coal power stations are closed, so they have only one reliable source of energy left, gas. No matter how carefully the U.S. sanctions are crafted to spare European allies, Germany is still irritated. On Thursday, German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas tweeted in response to the U.S. measures that the European energy strategy will be decided in Europe, not in the U.S. We fully reject external interference and extraterritorial sanctions. Theoretically, the European Union could even retaliate by raising duties on American LNG. The Trump administration is not known for its common sense. They think shipping LNG across a vast ocean and charging three times more than pipeline gas from our neighbor will be accepted by Europeans. The U.S. is selling LNG to Europe at a higher price. Congress has simply embarrassed themselves once again. 
The Ruskies are never going to cut off the gas as long as Germany pays, and Germany knows it. Even during the Cold War, the Russians always delivered. That's how reliable they are. Can't say the same about Americans that weaponize everything. I'd say time to send the troops in Ramstein back home, except, of course, all Trump would do, stick them in Poland and make things even worse for both Germany and Russia. That's the design. The US creating chaos and destabilizing countries. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The long-threatened US sanctions against Nord Stream 2, Russia's $10.5 billion natural gas pipeline to Germany, will finally take effect next week, but their timing and design can only slow down the project's now certain completion. Even so, Ukraine, the primary injured party from the new pipeline, is grateful for small favors from Washington. The sanctions, crafted by Senators Ted Cruz, Republican of Texas, and Gene Shaheen, a New Hampshire Democrat, have been attached to the 2020 National Defense Appropriations Act, which already has been approved by Congress, President Donald Trump has promised to sign it. The state and treasury departments will have 60 days to present to Congress a list of vessels involved in the construction of Nord Stream 2 and another Russian pipeline, Turk Stream, and of people and firms that provided these ships. Those people and entities will have 30 days to wind down their business, or they will be barred from entry to the US and could have their assets frozen. Sanctions are the modern version of laying siege to a country. After World War II, European countries became vassal states to the military-industrial complex and the US banking cabal. They've been on their knees ever since. Maybe their people are tired of living on their knees. For the past couple of decades, Russia has taken steps to isolate themselves as much as possible from the US dollar and the Fed syndicate, which is why the CIA spooks military-industrial complex and bank cabal hate their guts and consider them their enemy. I think many of the vassal states are taking notice. War. Threatening the Nord Stream equals to threatening the EU energy security. Ukraine could make a lot of money by building new pipes increasing transit, but they have to do what the US tells them to do and have no right now for a pro-Ukrainian position. Only pro-US. Germany, France, and Russia could create an entente that would operate over the heads of the EU countries, and replace the US as a rules maker. I think Cole has, had this in mind. Combined with China, at least in operational matters, like evading SWIFT and the dollar monetary, economic dog collar, these powers could make a truly multi-polar world. Their combined military, green man capabilities could create an impossible whack-a-mole challenge for a nation already crumbling due to the vast sums spent on defense. Which is in the interest of the vast majority of American people, rather than the professionals who run US foreign policy. According to recent surveys, the general population in Germany sees the USA as the most significant foreign threat. A majority of Germans want good relations with Russia. Especially the industry wants to trade with RU. Everything else is transatlantic propaganda. I suspect every country has the same sentiment ever since Americans showed they were untrustworthy and unscrupulous by voting for someone as laughably undignified as Donald Trump. With the exception of Russia, North Korea, and Saudi Arabia, who have benefited mightily from his presidency. Since 1945 and Bretton Woods, the USA had a captive audience. That is changing. Exxon and Chevron and all the rest of the US companies get US military backing to plunder the planet for energy resources, while Russia is a terrorist country for selling its own natural gas from within its own borders to a willing buyer. The American way, established in 1945. Every day. Every topic. Every country. The US cartel wants to know what's in it for them. We're protecting you from your neighbors, now pay up, or you'll never see your family again. Look at it this way, with US deficit at $1.2 trillion, every cent of the US defense budget is borrowed, it is someone else's money. Every USAF Air Force plane, every nuclear sub, every US Marine, every US Navy ship, every bomb, every US Army vehicle, every gallon of gas the US military consumes, it's all borrowed money. Let me paint you this picture, Nord Stream 2 bypasses Ukraine and its energy company Burisma. Germany buying directly from Gazprom is bad for Burisma. Congress votes bipartisan on sanctions against Nord Stream, which will benefit Burisma. Bidens are deeply involved with Burisma, probably a whole many more Congress critters. 
Impeachment will go away now that the votes have been bought for sanctions against Nord Stream it was never about Trump this or Biden that it was only an open market for votes on this massive spending bill, which includes the sanctions. Mammoth 2020 NDAA of 738 billion. How many career politicians are on the take, now honestly? Give your heads a shake and try and figure this out. See how the cookie crumbles and how deep the rabbit hole goes. Why are Clintons never being charged for the apparent fraud and corruption gig they are running with the Clinton Foundation? When it comes to business and politics, one crow doesn't peck another crow's eyes. Wake the hell up, people. You've been had. Ham-fisted Trump is so transparently in bed with the petrodollar's bankers. They're in every orifice. Even during the coldest days of the Cold War, Europe bought gas from Russia. It was a mutually benefiting cooperation. The Cold War is over, despite NATO trying to reignite it. This new gas relation with Russia is again mutually benefiting both Europe and Russia. The sanctions against Russia are only hurting European businesses. Europe is waking up to the, screw the EU, agenda of America in Europe, and Europe is now saying, F the USA. Brexit is a done deal. The US basically killed the WTO. Europe will definitely move east. I highly doubt that Trump knows the USSR supplied gas to Europe all during the Cold War. There was never a problem. Europe paid for the gas, and Russia delivered without fail. Until the USA started stirring up the mess in Ukraine. The US does not want an independent Europe. The US wants control of its lapdogs. The more the US tries to force and dictate its dominance over others, the faster it will lose the few allies it has left. This push to always choose the path of confrontation is strange and self-defeating. The US sure knows how to make enemies. The US passes sanctions on Nord Stream 2 and has nothing to offer Germany in place of it. Really dumb beyond belief. Germany and Russia will complete the pipeline, and there isn't anything the US can do about it. Expect the US to lose more trade with Germany in return. Trump's goal is for the USA to become the most hated nation on the planet. So far, he is very successful. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.